when it comes to the richest individuals today, the tech titans like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates dominate the rankings. However, uncovering the untold story of the wealthiest business tycoon in history, whose empire withstands the test of time, we delve into the captivating legacy of Standard Oil. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of the latest updates on our channel. The birth of John Rockefeller in upstate New York in 1839 marked the humble beginnings of history's greatest oil monopoly. His father, a traveling merchant posing as a botanic physician, sold the 19th century equivalent of homeopathic medicine. Despite the confusing household, John learned the art of negotiation and maximizing his earnings from a young age. His nomadic upbringing fueled his ambition, and at just three years old, he started earning money by raising turkeys and working for neighbors to support his mother. While the pay was meager, John took on additional jobs with other companies to supplement his income. After two years, he grew dissatisfied with his employer's refusal to give him a substantial raise. Determined to outdo them, he ventured into his own produce brokerage. With a remarkable reputation, he secured a significant loan of $4,000, a substantial sum at the time. John traded hay, grain, and meats, and in his first year, he achieved a half million dollars in sales. Although his commissions were modest, it was a tremendous success. During that era, oil had not gained the value it holds today. Gasoline cars did not yet exist, but oil could be refined into kerosene, a widely used lamp fuel. Rather than engaging in the laborious process of finding oil himself, John chose to purchase it from others. He patiently awaited the government's completion of a rail line connecting Pennsylvania's oil fields to Cleveland in 1863. When the line was established, John was well prepared with a network of partners and financial institutions to support his venture. He assembled a team of skilled chemists and engineers who not only optimized the refining process, but also discovered innovative uses for petroleum byproducts. The early refineries in Cleveland operated at a mere 60% efficiency, but John significantly improved his percentage while also selling valuable byproducts such as paraffin wax, tar, and naphtha. Within two years, the Rockefeller refinery's worth exceeded $70,000, making it one of Cleveland's largest. John's ambitions did not cease there. By 1865, there were 26 rival refineries, but within five years, he had acquired all but four. To manage his expanding business, he incorporated Standard Oil of Ohio in 1870. Nevertheless, some competitors remained resilient. In a bid to eliminate competition, John gradually reduced the prices of oil and kerosene, at times by as much as 80%. His strategy proved successful and by 1880, he had acquired refineries across the northeastern United States, refining over 90% of the nation's oil production. John's influence grew to the extent that he could personally negotiate rebates with owners of major rail companies for using their trains. However, this practice of backroom deals raised concerns within the business world. Since rail transportation was pivotal for transporting industrial goods, many industrialists feared John's abuse of transportation rebates could lead to similar monopolization in their respective industries. Over the next decade, Standard Oil faced mounting criticism from businessmen, politicians, and the media. Ohio legislators drafted antitrust regulations to target Rockefeller but he stayed one step ahead. In 1882, he re-established the company in New Jersey as the Standard Oil Trust, which held stakes in over 40 local companies. Meanwhile, the Rothschild family developed and transported massive oil deposits discovered in Russia and Asia to America, further intensifying the competition. In 1890, the federal government passed the Sherman Antitrust Act, providing politicians with the authority confront the Standard Oil Trust. 
Nevertheless, the intricate legal structure of the company posed challenges to investigations, delaying the actual breakup until 1911. However, by that time, John Rockefeller had already cashed in and relinquished active management of the company. In its final two decades, Standard Oil paid out dividends exceeding half a billion dollars. Estimates suggest that the company's peak worth reached $1 trillion, making the breakup somewhat expected. Nonetheless, John Rockefeller retained his stake in those companies until his death. Interestingly, many of the fragmented entities eventually merged back together. Presently, remnants of Standard Oil are incorporated within ExxonMobil, Chevron, and BP, which have become substantial entities. John Rockefeller's ownership of these successor companies secured his position as the wealthiest businessman in history. With an estimated worth of $400 billion, to this day, no one has surpassed Rockefeller's financial success, with even Jeff Bezos unlikely to achieve such monumental wealth. And with this, we reach the end of today's video. What do you think about today's video? Share your opinion. Do let us know in the comment section below. And if you like today's video, give us a thumbs up. And do not forget to hit the subscribe, share this video with your friends and family, and press the bell icon for more upcoming videos. We'll see you next time with a newer video. Stay tuned and take care.